All right, so welcome to the first tutorial video. So first of all, how do you even get Space Sim? So here's the steps you have to take. First, go to my channel, and on my channel, there will be a link right here. Just copy it and paste it to the search bar. Join my server, and once you get there, you can go to the tutorial section. Here is some basic information how to get it, but today we're getting 0.4.3, so join the Space Sim server. After you get there, scroll down until you find the Space Sim section. Here you can find builds, and this is where you can get Space Sim 0.4.3. Continue to download, and download it. So you have to hit continue to download only, and it'll download for you. Once you've done that, go to your taskbar and search up Space Sim 0.4.3. It'll send you to the setup wizard. Now I already have it, just go through the steps it tells you, and you can successfully install Space Sim. That's how you get Space Sim in the first place, but one of the basics, I'll be teaching you how to add planets, move them around, set the velocities, etc. So right here is the add button. If you click it, it gives you a list of things to add. Let's say we wanted to add Mars. So it's going to place Mars over here, and if you want to play the simulation, you can press the play button. It's down here, and this is if you want to record it. But we're going to do this. We are going to talk about this later. So that's how you get a simulation started in Space Sim. So after you know how to do that, it's important to know like what your computer can do. So so go to Tools, it'll show you a list. You want to go to Run Benchmark. Now it's going to run a benchmark to see how good your computer is. This may take a few minutes. All right, so my computer, dang, 25,000. It used to be 30,000, but it's kind of wearing down or something. But after you know what your benchmark is, mine is 25,000. So anything between 1 and 5,000, that's bad. 5,000 to 10,000, alright, that's pretty good. 10,000 to 20,000, it means your computer is good and should be able to handle space in like pretty easily. 20,000 to 30,000, okay, your PC is like pretty good. You can do a lot. And 30,000 plus, you probably have a really good computer like this guy. God, 89,000. Your CPU score 354. That's like three times more of mine, all cooked. But now you know what particles you should use. Oh, I didn't know you can move this around. You can actually just look around at the simulation if you want. So now we know my recommended particles is 25,000. I'm going to be using 10,000 because it runs faster. Now you might not know how to move the camera. So right click drag is rotating around the object. Double clicking on an object selects it. Double click on the Earth, now you're selecting the Earth. Mars, you're on Mars. Or left click and drag is what you do just to move the camera around. Now I'm centered around nothing, I'm just... So let's spice up your simulation. If you want to move the position, you have to click on the object, but you can actually move them. So this is the position area. This is what position your object is in. You can move it. In like three different ways so after you know how to move the objects well how do you change the speed well there's a velocity thing right here so you can change the velocity of an object so more velocity in the x direction means it's going over here changing the y is the opposite direction or not really the opposite and z is once again up and down so now you can change it so that it can collide with the earth in a different way Oh, the nostalgia. Well, how do you make your sim faster? You can see that it's pretty slow. So you have to hit the settings button right here. And this is your simulation settings, where you can have the particle count. The limit per body basically means what's the minimum amount of particles an object can have. So go to settings. If you change it to 10,000, Mars now has 10,000 particles, despite being smaller than Earth. If it's set to something low, then how many particles Mars has is just what percent of volume Mars takes up compared to the entire sim. The Earth takes up 86% of the space, so it has 86% of the particles. Mars takes up 13% of space, so it has 13% of the particles. But changing the limit for body means that despite having only 13% of the space, it has 50,000 or has 5,000 particles. But it does make the particles smaller in size compared to the other planets. So they could sink inside of like, the big particles if the difference is too high, like this. So how do you change the simulation speed? Well, down here in integration, 
you can set different things. Infinite duration means how long the sim's duration is. So if I set it to one hour, then it'll only simulate one hour before it cuts off. You can continue it by pressing the play button, it'll keep going after one hour. The automatic time step is just the computer suggestion time step. You can change this up to three times more. So 48 seconds is 0.8 minutes. And now your simulation is way faster, but it's less precise. Time step means like how much time per like simulation. So if your time step is too high, then your Mars could be like right here, and then the next frame will be over here. But around this area, Mars wouldn't have been there, so like it won't be able to simulate that. It makes it less realistic. If you do anything above three times, like let's say two minutes. Huh, that actually still kind of worked. Five minutes. Yeah, your planets start exploding because the particles are affected by gravity. So the particles start falling into the planet and it takes five minutes until like it'll render the next frame. So your particle might move from here down to the center of the Earth. And in the next frame, well, there's a bunch of particles at the center of the Earth, which creates a lot of pressure and then it explodes. That's why it's unrecommended to go above three times automatic time step. Adaptive stepping basically just like changes the time step based on what's going on. So if there's a bunch of action happening, then the time step will be automatically lowered. This is for realism, but you can also turn it off. So each time step will always be exactly 5 minutes. By the way, I meant 0.5 minutes, or whatever it's set to. Maximal time step is basically what's the maximum time step it can go to. Let's set it to something high. So then it will start speeding up, so then it will speed up whenever it can. This is useful if you're like, you need a super low time step, because you're doing a super fast collision, but you also don't want to wait 10 years for it to like settle. Boom. And eventually you go to normal time step. There are different solvers in this simulation. The main one is the IISPH. It's less realistic, but it's also like super fast and convenient to run. It's still pretty good at realism. My advice, never use PBD. If you want more realism, you can use SPH. What this does is make it makes the particles more squishy, which is what happens in real life. I really hate how it slows things down like way too much on a collision, so you can turn off adaptive stepping, like shown before, so that it won't. Okay. Actually, the time step is cut in half for these semis. So you gotta use the lower time step for SPH simulations. Let's compare it to an IISPH simulation. You can see that there is a little bit of difference, so that's why IISPH is used because it's only a little bit less realistic, but it's also twice as fast. Well, that is the basics of creating a sim in Space Sim. So, if you want any more tutorials, just comment down what I should make a tutorial on next, and goodbye. I really hope I ended this video.